This here is the Ryzen 2400G, one of AMD's first Ryzen APUs. So this comes with four cores and eight threads. Also comes with its onboard GPU, the Vega 11. Now this is an old processor and you can find this almost everywhere. Now we actually bought ours from the Facebook use marketplace for about $35, which I thought was a steal. We're going to see if this processor is still capable in our modern landscape. We're going to run this using its onboard graphics and likewise see if upgrading to an RTX 3060 to pair with this processor is viable, especially for those who actually have this processor. And on the later part of the video, we're also going to compare this against a modern AM4 processor, which is the Ryzen 5600, which you can buy for about $80 in AliExpress. Okay, let's go. Let's start off with some games using our internal graphics processor, the Vega 11, and we are recording this using an external capture card on a separate PC. And in Warzone, you can see that it's really struggling. Like we are maxed out our Vega 11 in here, and that is why we're getting about really low FPS with Warzone. And this is with FSR 3 turn on set to performance, right? Like the lows are very bad. Soldering is really like, yeah. In Fortnite, it's I have a good experience as well. We've got some really bad stuttering in here. Like our lows are about like leaving. It's really critical on our build fights. On our FPS is just hovering lower than 100. In PUBG, it's quite different. Um, same thing. We have maxed out our GPU in here. And we're running at about 40 FPS even with those logs in here. The stuttering is present. And yeah, at least the lows are not that bad. But overall, FPS is still around 40. And Valorant, it's quite the same right lower than 100 fps of 1080p and uh, we've got a lot of stuff this here especially on things with the peak so uh, yeah you, you can play the game but it's definitely not the best experience in hell divers 2 we are getting about 30 fps in here and we have set this one to 1080p low and performance render scales so are really really low and the stuttering is quite bad in this one even with a lot of face now we haven't maxed out our gpu and that's because we are clearly in a cpu mold next scenario in here okay what happens when we add the rtx 3060 12 gigabyte and let's start off with Warzone and here we have a direct comparison we're still clearly CPU bottleneck here even with our RTX 3060 you can see that the stuttering is still quite bad the lows are about 30 in Fortnite it's quite the same scenario we are still a CPU bottleneck in here so even if we've got a really decent graphics processor we're still not able to improve our 1% lows or if he is as a whole does go higher but because we are struggling with our cpu our lows are quite bad in valorant it's actually a better scenario in here with our rtx 3060 we're now able to relinquish that gpu bottleneck and actually put the load down to our cpu we're still at around 79 percent on our cpu however we're now able to pull much higher FPS compared to just our standalone Vega 11. In PUBG, this is quite an interesting experience that with our Vega 11, we up max out our GPU. However, when we add the 3060 into our 2400G, the bottleneck now transfers to the CPU. And you can see that we're now at 99% with our CPU and we're actually having really bad frame times as compared to when we had our onboard graphics processor now yes you can see that it's about really stuttering in one side and on a big 11 although it's slow at least the frame times are more stable finally we have hell divers 2 and in this case it's just very bad with our big 11 it's really an improvement as compared to just an onboard graphics the rtx 3060 12 gigabyte has definitely given us some headroom to push more frames and you it's clearly seen in this scenario right here the effects even shows that it's like a powerpoint presentation on one end while the other is actually a much more playable state okay let's move down to real world gameplay now and we've got 2400 g paired with the rtx 3060 12 gigabyte and here in warzone we are experiencing really bad stutters here and that's because we have clearly maxed out our cpu in here now it's around 90 percent 91 percent warzone clearly utilizes more than eight threads and this is why we're getting really bad stuttering for a game one percent lows at about 13 where we've got like 
54 average FPS and this is already with RTX 3612 GB. Even in the Gulag where there's not much going on, we are still struggling in the game. Yeah, we were able to bring those FPS a little bit higher but the lows in the stuttering is still present. Here we have Hell Divers too, and you can see that it's quite different compared to when we're just testing on our training grounds. The stuttering is still there. Uh, a lot of micro stutters. We've got about 50 FPS in here and lows around 39. Even with multiple effects, yes, at least this one's actually playable compared to Warzone. Now, CPU usage is about 89%, and our GPU is actually around 62%. We're clearly in a CPU bottleneck scenario here. The main thing with this one is at least it's much playable compared to just onboard graphics with the Figure Leave It. Our next game is Arena Breakout Infinite. So this is a looter shooter game, uh, similar to Escape from Darko, but this one's free. So I've just started playing this game. It's actually not bad here. Now this is the farm map, 60 FPS. Obviously there are micro stutters and some frame time spikes in here. However, it's in a playable state with our RTX 3060 and the 2400G. It's definitely not the best experience, but at least it's manageable and playable. If you guys are keen on me integrating this game into our benchmark suite, let me know in the comments down below. I'm also waiting for Delta Force to release on open beta. So if you're keen on that one, let me know in the comments section. Our next game in here is Aaron's favorite building game Fortnite and our FPS is around 100 and sometimes going lower than 100. We are clearly CPU down in here and you can see that with about like 80, 80 plus percent CPU usage whereas our RTX 3060 is just chilling in there at 35 percent and this is at performance mode and its GPU is just not utilized as it should right? and you can see that with the GPU clock just really low. Yes you can play Fortnite in this one, yes there will be some stutters and you will probably struggle with with build fights on this one and our next game is Valorant and it's quite different compared to our benchmark run our FPS is just around 180 and it's very clear that there's GPU is just not working hard here. It's just look at that one. The clock speed is just around 1000. Our CPU is clearly about 50, 50 percent and we're not able to push those FPS anymore higher. That's not the best but obviously you can still play Valorant in this one. This FPS at least is still high enough compared to our onboard graphics. In PUBG, we have a not very smooth experience in here. We are just around 60 FPS. Uh, clearly we are CPU bottleneck once again, around 90 plus percent utilization on our CPU, whereas our GPU at least is clocking higher compared to our previous games, right? 1900 in there. Clearly not the smoothest experience, but we are able to shoot. And at least with PUBG, it's a bit slower pace compared to our other games. You can still hit those shots depending on how you position yourself. Obviously, you don't go Rambo in this game. You can just probably strategically place yourself. In Apex Legends, it's very clear that we are limited by our CPU in here and our FPS is just hovering less than 100 on scenes where there is a lot of things going on. Our GPU is not able to be fully utilized even though we are pushing those clock speeds in there and that's because we are clearly limited and bottlenecked by our 2400G. Lows are at 37, which clearly is not the base. Frame times are not very stable as well. Now that we've seen the 2400G with the RTX 3060, how about when we compare it against the modern AM4 processor, which is the Ryzen 5600? And in Warzone, it's a night and day difference between these two processors. You've got a better stability in your frame times here with the 5600 compared to the stuttery miss with the 2400G. In Valorant, it's quite night and day as well. 800 or 900, almost 900 FPS with our 5600 compared to about 280 FPS with our 2400G. And our RTX 3060 is able to be utilized more compared to the 2400G where in Falneck is clear to the CPU in PUBG. Likewise, it's a night and day difference. You've got a stuttery miss with our 2400G with RTX 3060 compared to the Ryzen 5600. It's a very, smooth on the 5600 whereas it's really stuttery 
on the 2400J. It does become a slightly more stable when we are on our mortar benchmark, but our FPS difference is really high. And lastly, we have Hell Divers, which is not as bad, I suppose. At least we're getting about 91 FPS, 90 FPS compared to about 140 FPS with our Ryzen 5600. Not bad. However, with the Ryzen 5600, we're able to push our GPU to get some more frames. The Ryzen 2400G is definitely showing its age. You can see that it's struggling with some of the games that we're playing right now. And yeah, it can play the game even with its onboard graphics. Just don't expect any miracles with that one. If you're wanting an upgrade, the Ryzen 5600 is definitely a decent choice. And I really think that's one of the best value processors right now. We actually tested this one just recently. So if you're curious about its full performance click this video right here and i'll see you guys over there